Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Fort, and we are here for a poetry discussion. Uh, and this comes to us from the one and only Charles Bukowski, out of The Pleasures of the Damned. But I think this is a discussion which will prove at least interesting, whether you uh, describe yourself as a fan of Bukowski or not, because this is a discussion largely about the nature of writing, of publishing, and of the perpetuation of literature, uh, which springs forth from the poem, the poem here being The Last Generation, which happens on page 383 of The Pleasures of the Damned, and it reads as such. It was much easier to be a genius in the 20s. There were only three or four magazines, and if you could get into them four or five times, you could end up in Gertie's parlor. You could possibly meet Picasso for a glass of wine, or maybe only Miro. And yes, if you sent your stuff postmarked from Paris, chances of publication became much better. Most writers bottomed their manuscripts with the word Paris and the date. And with a patron, there was time to write, eat, drink, and take drives to Italy and sometimes Greece. It was, a, it was good to be photoed with others of your kind, it was good to look tidy, enigmatic, and thin. Photos taken on the beach were great. And yes, you could write letters to the 15 or 20 others bitching about this and that. And you might even get a letter from Ezra or from him. Ezra liked to give directions, and him liked to, liked to practice his writing in his letters when he couldn't do the other. It was a romantic, grand game then, full of the fury of discovery. Now, now there are so many of us, hundreds of literary magazines, hundreds of presses, thousands of titles. Who is to survive out of all this mulch? It's almost improper to ask. I go back. I read the books about the lives of the boys and girls of the 20s. If they were the lost generation, what would you call us? Sitting here among the warheads with our electric touch typewriters? The last generation? I'd be, I'd rather be lost than last, but as I read these books about them, I feel a gentleness and generosity. As I read of the suicide of Harry Crosby in his hotel room with his whore, that seems as real to me as the faucet dripping now in my bathroom sink. I like to read about them. Joyce, blind and prowling the bookstores like a tarantula, they said. Dos Passos, with his clipped newscast using a pink typewriter ribbon. D.H., horny and pissed off. H.D., being smart enough to use her initials, which seemed much more literary than Hilda Doolittle. G.B. Shaw, long established as noble and dumb as royalty. Flesh and brain turning to marble. A bore. Huxley. Promenading his brain with great glee, arguing with D with Lawrence that it wasn't in the belly and the balls that glory was in the skull. And that sick Sinclair Lewis coming to light. Meanwhile, the revolution being over, the Russians were liberated and dying. Gorky with nothing left to fight for, sitting in his sitting in a room, trying to find phrases praising the government, many others broken in victory. Now, now there are so many of us, but we should be grateful, for in a hundred years, if the world is not destroyed, think how much there will be left of all this. Nobody really able to fail or succeed, just relative merit, diminished further by our numerical superiority. We will all be catalogued and filed. All right. If you still have doubts of those other golden times... There were other curious creatures. Richard Aldington, Teddy Dreiser, F. Scott, Hart Crane, Wyndham Lewis, the Black Sun Press. But to me, the twenties centered mostly on Hemingway, coming out of the war and beginning to type. It was all so simple, all so deliciously clear. Now, there are so many of us. Ernie, you had no idea how good it had been four decades later when you blew your brains into the orange juice. Although I grant you, that was not your best work.
And it's kind of funny that this comes up, this idea of it being so simple. If you had one patron, you could live in Europe and drive to other cities and have so much and eat and drink and party and be well. Because we discussed a little bit about that, <clears throat> being able to live that incredibly cheaply uh, during our discussions for a movable feast. And sorry to tell you, Chucky Buck, but the generations just kept on a coming. And it got even harder. It got even harder to know what publications had a voice. It got even harder to know where submitting your work was worthwhile. It got hard to know what on your resume meant anything. It got harder to know what being published even meant. Do you own my online rights or just my first time publication rights? Do you own the rights to this work in totality? These things all split and it meant different things depending on where you were published, how you were published. It got even, and even the big publications have let artistry take a backseat to politics as if there was any art in politics. And even collections, formerly proud collections such as the Great American Series, um, have devolved into something that feels cobbled together in an embarrassing sense. Um, but those electric typewriters, those electric touch typewriters that you talked about in this poem, Chucky Buck, those were a first generation of sorts. And a couple tech generations later, no one really needed these three or four literary magazines, um, much less a postmark from Paris. Things today with e-publishing and Amazon and the artist keeping complete and total rights over their work um, have made it so that artists are able to fling their own ideas around, which is essentially where publishing started, with people carrying around their own manuscripts and hawking them. Um, and then it became lucrative and big business stepped in. Big business created gatekeepers. Now the gatekeepers are gone and people get to vote with their dollar again. Um, so much so that a, an independent writer such as, I believe her name is Brenna Aubrey, reportedly turned down a three book deal from a big New York publisher because why publish with an established publisher when you're making all of the money off of your work and you still own it. It's still yours. You get to do with it whatever you please. So it, it, it leads me to the question, where does this go next? What is the next turn in the literary evolution? Um, will we see a return to big publishing and if we do under what guise for what reasons will this return to big business uh, it is difficult for me to say I don't know I don't really have much speculation on the topic I don't really know what tea leaves to read in order to understand this now I think we're sort of going through on the visual entertainment level, the television movie production type of level, what the generation that Bukowski is talking about in the last generation went through with writing in that it's not just TV right now and it's not just Hollywood right now. You've got Amazon, you've got Hulu, you've got all of these different uh, Netflix producing so many things that eventually, I think, the, how do I say this? So all of those things take a lot more training than perhaps does writing. So with the experience gained in all of these different places, I think that the next turn is to platforms such as YouTube where, okay, you, you experienced great success 
on a three seasons of a show for Amazon that was not then picked back up for a fourth season. What do you do? You earn your own money. There's no one has anything open at this time. Start making your own money on YouTube to prove yourself again. So in that way, I think that what will happen with that industry is that the big boys, the big people, I'm sorry, will start again picking off people who have created names on their own. You decide to get on YouTube and make a series, a docu-series, well, all of a sudden Netflix has some documentary money to fling your way. So I wonder if that is the next evolution for writing as well. That the, the big publishers, and which is, you know, that story about Brenna Aubrey turning down a three-book deal is sort of what I'm talking about here, that they were watching to see who became successful on their own platform. I just wonder if perhaps, as opposed to, hey, we'll give you a three-book deal, it becomes, we will grant you a platform. Uh, we will integrate things for you. You give us three pieces. Not necessarily uh, novels, not necessarily novels of a specific genre, but you give us X and we will provide Y. It becomes a goods and services trade as opposed to, yeah, we'll give you an advance on this and then you kind of take the money and do whatever. And if it doesn't sell as well as we hope it will, eh, you might not get a second contract. I just wonder where the rights are there. But um, I'm not sure. I am interested to know in the comments below where you think the future of publishing, of publication, of writing, of the independent artist is headed. So that is all I have for this episode. Uh, hit the like button if you would. Hit subscribe if you are here and you have not already done so. If you would like to help us create more content here on Strip Coverlet, there is, as always, a link to our Patreon to be found in the description below. And this is part of 365 videos in 365 days through the year of 2019. And I hope to see you uh, tomorrow for another episode.